Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixim Perfect, and today I'll attempt to answer the age-old question, and that is how to remove banding. It's gonna be more of a quest than a tutorial, and the journey is gonna be fantastic. So, without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in the mystical world of Photoshop and to understand banding, let's go ahead and create some banding. So create a new layer and then select the gradient tool, right? Black to white and let's make a gradient. Do we see any banding? There's a little bit of banding. Let's make it even more exaggerated. So let's try doing it this way or even more. Do we see any banding? Yes, there is banding. If you zoom in even more, you will see banding. Not so much, but there is. To enhance it, let's go ahead and create a curves adjustment layer. Okay, and take this slider from the right to the left and take the slider from the left to the right. Just like so. You see the banding now, right? You see the banding? Okay, now we do see the banding. Have a look at the banding. It's so very harsh because we added the curves. Now, what does that teach us? It teaches us the more adjustments we add, the more banding we will see in our images. The second thing we learned here is that whenever there is a close shade, okay, if your image has a lot of details, you won't see banding. Banding only happens in seamless areas where there are close shades of the same color nearby. Okay, so we have a gray, lighter gray, white, so all going seamless. So there are very closer shades nearby. Now your image might not be capable enough to show infinite number of shades. And that's why we see the banding. Now looking at this, I'm having an idea. What if we blur it out? Will the banding go away? Yes or no? Decide right now. Let's see if you're right later or not. Okay, so let's select this layer and let's try just going to filter and blur and then Gaussian blur. Let's see if we blur it out. Let's see what happens. Eight. Nothing is happening. Just the banding patterns are changing. Nothing crazy is happening. Still, there is banding. Hit cancel, okay? So at 247, nothing is happening. Just remember that number, 247, cancel. Now have a look at this. If I go to image, mode, change it from eight bits to 16 bits, nothing still changes, but wait for it. Now when you go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur, and apply the same thing, 247. Have a look at this. <laughs> at even 188, it's all blended together. Very nice. No banding. Looks amazing. How is it happening? With 16-bit, you have double the color depth in your image. So, it shows you more shades. And no banding, right? Very less banding. You just cannot see it. Okay. Hit OK again. It's gone. Banding is gone. It's looking all right. Now you might be wondering, well, what if I upload this to Facebook? What if I upload on the web? What if I get it printed? At that point in time, banding will return, right? Because it will be converted to 8 bits sometimes, especially on the web. So what to do now? If you convert it back to 8 bit again, let's see what it does. Go to image, mode, 8 bit. Have a look at it. It added some noise and it's better than banding. Now we are zoomed out too much. If you zoom out, no banding at all. So this kind of noise is something that we want, okay? So let's go back a bit to this. If we try to add noise here, if we go to filter, noise, add noise. Now keep in mind, we won't be exaggerating the banding so much. So let's go ahead and decrease the effect of the curves. It's kind of too much, okay? It will be around this number, okay? If we try to go to add noise, noise, add noise. We will have to add a lot of noise for it to be removed. A ton of noise. And this looks very noisy. Have a look, at least this noise. It looks very bad, very noisy. Even if you go two-ish, see, very noisy. 1.5, very noisy, yes. So instead of doing that, let Photoshop add noise. So my method would be, Try to work on 16-bit. If your client requires 16-bit, amazing. You don't have to do anything. But it's always best to convert it into 16-bit, then work on your image, and then convert it back to 8-bit because Photoshop adds much more natural noise, as you can see. If I go to image, mode, and then it's 16 bits right now, right? And then if I blur it out, filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur, okay? We blur it out at around this, hit OK. And then if I go to image mode 8-bit, 
Have a look at the kind of noise it adds. It's much more natural and if I zoom out, it looks much more better. Up until now, we have learned that it's all about color depth. Also, there's one more thing that we need to learn. When we are creating a gradient, make sure dither is checked. It adds similar kind of noise. So when you do that, when you do something like this, let's go ahead and make it more longer. See? it already adds that noise when the dither is checked. If I uncheck this, you will see the banding. So whenever you see dither in Photoshop, make sure you check that. And whenever you see banding, here's what I would suggest. Convert it into 16-bit, add a blur, and then convert it back to 8-bit if you need it. If you just want to keep the 16-bit awesome, you don't have to do anything at all. But if you convert it to 8-bit, Photoshop adds that kind of natural noise, which I think is better than just going to filter add noise. And your image looks so much more better. Now let's have a look at some real world examples so that we can actually witness how this thing happens and how can you apply it to your images. All right, so there is no banding. This is an image which is just 8 bits. RGB, there is no banding. Banding happens only when the image quality is very low and there is no noticeable banding, right? However, to be able to create the banding in this, let's do this. If I go to File, Export and Export As, there's one more learning here. And if I choose JPEG, okay, there is no banding as you can see, everything looks fine. But if you decrease the quality, have a look, the banding will be there. Look, there is banding. So always make sure that you save your image in the highest quality possible, right? So sRGB is fine, just export all. And I'm going to export it to my tutorial folder. And I've already created the test band, test banding to not at the rate, save. And we're going to open that in our Photoshop. So tutorial, test banding to, let's just open that inside of Photoshop. Okay, so we have an image with a ton of banding, mostly because it's of very low quality. And then all we need to do, first of all, select the area where you want to remove the banding. Now you can use any method of selection you like. I'm just going to use the quick selection tool right here and select the sky. Okay, most of it is now selected. Then we will press Q. This takes us to the quick mask mode. Whatever is not selected will be in red. Whatever is selected will be in color. Take the brush and just paint white on the areas that you want to be selected and black on the areas that you don't want to get selected. So, you're going to select black, press X to toggle between the foreground and the background and make it a little softer, just like this. Okay, we don't want the plane to be selected at all. So let's make the brush a little smaller and paint in black. Don't have to be super accurate here, it's fine. Just make sure you paint it completely so that none of the area is remaining and all of the plane is covered. Okay, it looks pretty okay. And you can be accurate when you're doing it. <laughs> okay, all right. Now let's zoom out. Press Q again. You will be back to the selection. Now with the selection active, press Ctrl or Command J. Now we have it on its own layer. To stop it from spilling, you can hold the Ctrl or Command, click on it, okay? Now you can convert it to 16-bit if you want to, but I don't think that will be required, but let's just do it. When you see extreme banding, even if you're blurring it, it's still there. At that point in time, convert it. Go to image and then mode, 16-bit. Then with the selection active, go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. Let's blur it slowly and gradually. Just zoom in to see. When the banding is gone, we need to stop. Okay, 28 works for us, I guess. Maybe let's go a little more. Let's go 35-ish. Let's see, 35 is great. Hit OK. Press Control or Command D. And we are good to go. Let's zoom in and see. The plane is fine. I think there's a little bit of erasing required from here. Let's go ahead and create a mask. Take the brush, foreground color black. Okay, and then just erase it from here. I think it's pretty good. Have a look at the mask. Yeah, it's, it's, it was already blue. What was I thinking? Okay, so here's the before with the banding, a ton of banding, and here's the after. And after that, you can go to image, mode, and change it back to 8-bit. Now Photoshop will add a little bit of noise to cover up the banding, but it is not visible, and it looks perfectly fine, no banding at all, amazing.
So that's one of the ways of removing banding. There are tons of ways. One of them is adding noise. One of them is this, and there might be some other ways as well. So this was my attempt at taking care of banding and helping you to understand why banding happens and what can we do to remove it. Remember that whenever you increase it from 8-bit to 16-bit, the color depth of the document increases. It can contain and show more colors. Therefore, we see lesser banding because it can show more shades. However, if there's an image with banding, it already has less colors, right? So when you change it from 8 to 16, it still remains the same. You need to blur it out so that it can blend in and show in more colors. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all your support. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.